Hello, this is Real World Audio, and uh, this video is a little bit of a introduction, a teaser, a spoiler alert, because we are going to have, starting on Monday, a revolutionary series on measurements, and uh, and I wanted to introduce this little series because now I have put a quite significant time in preparation for this. And uh, it's, it's part of the Matrix series, which means decoding the Matrix, uh, looking behind the curtain, uh, which is not just staying at uh, the face value of things, uh, not enjoying the uh, marketing slogans, but really looking at the physics and what's going on. And this video series was inspired by Frank's comment, that, which he posted on uh, one of my videos on the transformer volume control video is it suitable for solid state amps if you want to check out that video oops uh, not now let's just pause it but let's go back to frank's comment and he said that another argument for single-ended triodes with low or non-existent negative feedback is that they might they may have some distortion on the higher output levels, but on the micro detail output distortion, as low as 0.1% or even lower. Heavily corrected solid state has what they call in French distortion d'heure, high distortion on very low levels and extreme low on higher output, which is flipping it. So for single net triodes, it's very low and rises with power, solid state, it's high at low power and, and drops down as power increases and when amplifier reaches clipping, it skyrockets. Uh, together with different distortion figures for different frequencies and volume levels. So for single ended triodes, the distortion parameters are much more consistent across the frequency band so you have this, this uh, correlation for low frequency, middle and high frequencies. And for uh, solid state amps, you have them scrambled. So basically the, the lows and the highs have different uh, distortion spectra. And the ear, your ear is very sensitive to these alterations. Yes, it is uh, a very big thing. And it's something that uh, audio engineers uh, completely neglect for the most part, is that uh, their goal is to uh, appease the reviewers, to create a perfect uh, device that measures the best on paper. But if you want a lab equipment, then this is your primary purpose. And <laughs> sadly, if you want to sell your amplifier, uh, you have to play by these uh, rules that that, uh, that consumer audio has, or not just consumer audio, but uh, but the whole marketing uh, system that we have for audiophile and non-audiophile amplifiers. Yet, the primary concern should be to design an amplifier that works for our brains. And uh, that's what Frank is telling us. So is your soul experiencing those problems and it is a source of listening fatigue and on so-called and some of those glorified high quality, high-end audio and high price super systems. Yeah, uh, that, that's a sad fact that when you listen to even like very high price, like I mean like million dollar range, uh, Solid state systems, there is a tremendous listening fatigue uh, involved, even though they can play like super loud, but it comes with super uh, duper uh, listening fatigue. And then and, and you would think, because I mean, most people think that it, it's because it's playing so loud, that's why you get the listening fatigue, but no. Uh, I can tell you, if you have a, a, a good uh, vacuum tube system, uh, you can uh, play it at exorbitantly uh, loud levels without any listening fatigue. So the listening fatigue is not coming from high volume. Uh, 
just go to a symphonic orchestra and uh, sit in the fifth row, sit in the first row and you will observe that you get a fraction of the listening fatigue that you think would be coming from those volumes. Of course, when you go to a rock concert, your ears are going to bleed because there they are using solid state amplification to amplify those guys uh, whacking at their guitars and uh, and their significant amount of uh, distortion is introduced that's going to affect your experience and cause the listening fatigue so even there even though they are playing at 120 130 db peaks it's not just that uh, loud volume which is uh, tiring your ears uh, the ears actually can physically uh, tolerate extreme levels of sound pressure without any physical problem the problem is that when you introduce distortion and very high level distortions then you are tiring out the processing the low level processing of your brain and it's that interface that uh, processes the 3d aspects of the sound the spatiality that's going to get depleted with that extremely loud music and if the distortion is very high then you are depleting the reserves of your low level auditory function extremely fast and you are going to get permanent hearing damage not because uh, the music was physically so loud that there is a, a physical injury but because those neurons those processing neurons were tasked to do so much work that they accumulate too much oxidative damage because they cannot recover and uh, when neurons accumulate uh, enough oxidative damage then they die so basically uh, that's what's happening with uh, high distortion levels so now uh, let's uh, take uh, one step further and let me introduce the three amplifiers that I'm going to uh, present to you and compare to you as part of these measurement series. And these three amplifiers represent uh, three different approaches to audio. I'm going to show you, uh, let's, let's uh, show you something that, that's close to Frank's heart the Yamamoto A08, which uses a, a Type 45 vacuum tube. It is a single-ended triode amplifier, which doesn't have any negative feedback. And it's what we would call as a flea power, not even low power, flea power amplifier with a peak power output around uh, 2 watts. So it's, it's rated at uh, 2 watts let's see maybe let's go back to the first screen so we are at stereophiles website measurements done by john atkinson and uh, let's see if we go back to page one we can see this is how the amp looks like and i have chosen the yamamoto because uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the flea power world the Yamamoto A08 is the uh, measuring stick. So this is the amplifier against which I would say uh, most audiophiles or, or all of us who, who are using flea power amps, we are all using it as a very high standard. And we are fortunate enough that John Atkinson has done measurements on it. And the second contestant that I'm uh, looking at is a Conrad Johnson push-pull vacuum tube amplifier, which is a fine specimen of a, of a high, higher power, or I would say relatively higher power tube amplifier using a 6550 power pentode, uh, which is a, a variant of the KT88, which would we could call as one of the 
uh, finer examples for a high power vacuum tube. So here also John Atkinson did the measurements. So I, I'm staying here consistent to uh, to how the measurements done. So that's why I'm not comparing a manufacturer's measurements versus uh, stereo five measurements versus a third party's measurements. I'm staying consistent so that we can interpret it, interpret the measurements. So this is how the CJ looks like. It's a monoblock, so there are two amps and it's a push-pull. So push and pull a pair of 6550s, a total of uh, four power tubes per monoblock. And, uh, and I'm using this as an example for the higher power uh, vacuum tube amplification for push-pull configuration because uh, CJ Conrad Johnson is the measuring stick for uh, in this category so it, it at least in the United States because I am located in the United States and and I'm very familiar with uh, Conrad Johnson and and uh, it's needless to stay for all Americans CJ is the standard for uh, high power vacuum tube amplification and that's why I'm using CJ as an example for uh, a high power push pull vacuum tube amplifier which uses negative feedback and the third contestant is a solid state amplifier the NAD NAD C298 it is a class D amplifier and uh, and of course uh, you we have all uh, have experiences and and there's the debate going on whether class A class B or class D is the uh, is better uh, there's uh, today no contest that uh, class A fine specimens uh, make more natural better sound than class D fine specimens but I'm taking class D because uh, fans of the solid state or and not just fans of the solid state, but everyone pretty much agrees that uh, technology called advancement is focused on class D amplification and it is clearly the way of the future or at least the technology for uh, cheap availability for mass marketing mass production and certainly best value uh, amplification that we have today and the value is going to get better and better in the upcoming years as we are seeing this technology leaving its infancy and gaining momentum and i'm using this nad amplifier because this is uh, one of the newer, one of the newest technologies in uh, that came out in class D, and uh, people have uh, ov an overwhelmingly positive feedback on this amplifier, and uh, er it's, it's if you read the reviews on it, uh, you can see that uh, it's just uh, uh, a favorite, and and everyone who tries it and then swaps it for the previous solid state amplifier even some mention uh, various Marant amplifiers everyone is reporting uh, a massive step up in uh, sound quality and uh, listening experience so that's why i am using these three specimen uh, the NAD for uh, present and future technologies, uh, what we have. And, and actually, this is not a cheap uh, class D amp. This is like a $2,000 value. So if you look at here, audio advice, and uh, it's like a 2K, at least here in the US. Uh, and uh, CJ, this is much more expensive. It's a very expensive monoblock. I don't know, it's like quite a few thousand dollars so it's much more expensive than the NAD and the Yamamoto it's it's around uh, three thousand dollars or so 
that's the, the rough ballpark I'm not sure what the current price is right now uh, but anyway so these are uh, I believe uh, really good experiences uh, I mean really good uh, specimens for comparison and uh, we will see in the series how they uh, measure and uh, and and whether we see any correlation between uh, what the measurements show us and what is the experience of audiophiles uh, regarding sound quality and uh, spoiler alert uh, if you don't want to hear then just uh, stop right now okay if you have not stopped then i can tell you that uh, the measurement re measurements really support uh, that the uh, flea power single ended triode has a sound that is uh, most suitable for human listening experiences and the measurements support it and uh, and the measurements also support that the cj is, uh, is is pretty good uh, comes quite close to the the single and the triodes measurements um, I would say not the same ballpark but not bad and it's still mapping uh, the the requirements of both human hearing and both coupling to room acoustics and uh, and for the solid state technology it's not measuring uh, favorably uh, to human hearing it doesn't match how our brain works and it uh, it works against your room acoustics requirements uh, if we would use the car terms then the yamamoto is extremely aerodynamic cj is pretty aerodynamic and this is uh, uh, the antithesis of aerodynamics so it has uh, like uh, almost like infinite aer aerodynamic drag if you use the car analogy and um, so thank you for tuning in i hope you are uh, expecting this series to come up and uh, it will be uh, pretty much scientific but i'm going to make it very easily understandable and i'm going to translate the measurements and tell you what those measurements are and how we use them and what you can learn from them so i'm going to give you basic information that i don't think i have uh, heard anywhere on youtube or read on papers this is something that when you are on audio manufacturer or you work on this field then you put it together with your experience with your expertise but it's um, well so i hope you will benefit you will find it interesting and if you are into measurements then you will absolutely have to tune in so please like subscribe and stay tuned for monday bye bye